Hello, this is Dave from ERC, and if you haven't been to my channel before, welcome. Glad you could make it. Today we're going to go ahead and install the Brain FPV Radex flight controller into this Hobby Zone Aero Scout. And right now it's already in there, it's completely done. But what I want to do in this video is just go through how I put in all the components and where I located them. Okay, just as a side note, I'm actually using a Free Sky radio. I've got a long range LRS plugged in the back of it right here. This is an easy UHF transmitter. And uh, you can use whatever you want for your long range, or you can just use a standard receiver, whatever you want. And then that connects to the Brain FPV Radex flight controller, which is gonna give it stabilization and everything that iNav provides, including GPS, return to home. Okay, now to get into the installation and what I did. And I've just removed the AR636B receiver. It was just stuck onto this little platform here with some sticky tape. And uh, what I want to do is just go over these wires so that if I have to put it back, I know how it goes. So we can see here, this is the aileron connections right here. And it's just a Y cable going right to here. So that's channel 2. Basically, we've got the bind plug to start out with. This is the bind plug connection, and that's on this first connector. And then starting with channel 1, we have throttle ailerons, elevator, and then rudder is on four. So fairly common connections for spectrum. So I've marked the elevator and the rudder wires, or I should say I've labeled them, because they're the hardest to figure out. They go down inside the fuselage and uh, you have to use a servo tester to find out which is which. So I just went ahead and marked them now to save time later. And then I'll pull off the rest of the wires there's the aileron Y cable. So obviously we know where that goes. And then the throttle is easy to figure out because it goes right there to the ESC. And then finally we have the bind wire, which I'll just leave on there. Okay, so that removes the receiver. All right, so now I'm going to remove the ESC. I want to put that in a different place eventually. You can see they had it underneath the receiver right there, underneath that platform. And there's, looks like one tie wrap holding it. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that tie wrap. If I can. There we go. Now will that just pull out of there? Yeah, it will. I'll just have to uh, fish the XT60 connector through that hole. And yeah, that's looking good so far. Yep, came right out. And there it is. So, 30 amp brushless ESC Hobby Zone. And it's got the model number there HBZ3808. Okay, so it's out. And I think I'm going to reuse it, but I'll just go ahead and mount it somewhere else. I'm thinking maybe underneath here. There's a ton of room underneath but I'd have to cut a little hatch or something to get in there. One thing to keep in mind with the Brain FPV Radix is that you won't have any rudder control on channel 5 if you don't add this wire right here. I went and added both wires for 5 and 6 even though I'm not using servo 6 I'm just using 5 for the rudder I went ahead and added both of them. But that's one thing that you must do if you don't have any rudder control because that signal is not being passed through to the servo for the rudder. Okay, I'm getting ready to mount the Brain FPV into the plane. And what I've done is I've slid a piece of plywood. You can see it's sticking out here on either end. I've slid that underneath the tray and glued it in with some CA. So. I've got these two holes here that I drilled in that little piece of plywood so I can strap down the battery leads or the battery wire that connects to the battery. You know, sometimes when you're uh, connecting the battery, you tug on those wires and I don't want to rip them right off the circuit board. 
So I'm going to put a tie wrap right here to hold them. But yeah, I just cut that piece of plywood, slid it up under there with some CA and glued it on. So what I did was put some packing tape over the top of the platform here and run these screws into the tape so I could mark it. Then I went back with a drill, an electric drill. Didn't want to do it by hand, so I used one of these electric drills to just drill the four holes. But now we're ready to put the screws to it. Okay, so here's what I have so far. The FPV brain is right here, screwed onto the platform. And I have an accessory cable right here for want to plug something to 12 volts. Could be the video transmitter, but I don't know yet. So here is the connection for the camera, the connection for the video transmitter, and then over here we have the receiver, which I may mount in the side here, and then we have the GPS. I've actually cut a hole in the side right here in the compartment, and I put the ESC down in here. So the ESC is down in this hole and that gets rid of all the wires so they're not up top here. I've actually run the wires for the motor down and through a hole here. And then the ESC comes off of the controller. And of course you can see the battery lead here which I've got plugged in. So you can see the battery leads right here. And they're underneath this tie wrap. I had two holes there and I put the tie wrap through it to hold that battery lead snug. This is the servo rail here with the various servos and the throttle. Yeah, the throttle cable from the ESC plugs in right here. And then underneath you can see the wires from some of the servos right here coming in like the elevator and the rudder. So I decided to put the video transmitter, and this is a 1.3 gigahertz video transmitter, I decided to put it back here. Now this is something I don't normally do, so this is going to be sort of an experiment. But I needed a little weight back here in the tail, because I'm going to have the FBV equipment, the camera and things in the front. So I need to balance it out. So I decided to put the video transmitter in the rear. So I'm powering the video transmitter from the 12 volts and that's straight off the battery where it connects into the power board here. Straight 12 volts from the battery. And uh, I've included a noise filter so that the power actually goes through this noise filter. A line filter or LC filter, whatever you want to call it. Uh, to get the noise out from the ESC. And that feeds right down through the fuselage, up through here to the video transmitter. And the yellow wire, which is the video wire, comes straight from the transmitter through the fuselage and solders on right here. As far as the GPS goes, I've decided to mount the GPS right here. And that gets it between the two wing spars where there shouldn't be any interference. And then the wing will be right on top of it. Uh, what I did was I made a little box out of tongue depressors for it to sit on and it's hollow and then I just took some double sided tape and taped the GPS to the top of it and that fits right down in here so I can still have my wires and things going down through that hole plenty of room there and then I can just take the GPS and just sit it right in here like this and it really can't move it's stuck in there pretty good and then when the wing gets on top of it that'll just hold it right in there alright the 433 megahertz receiver easy UHF is mounted right here and you could use a dragon link or open RLS or of course we have the team black sheep long range stuff but whatever your receiver is I've got it up underneath here and then the cable running right to here and I've tie wrapped the connector. It's a 90 degree connector and that's tie wrapped right to the plywood and then runs through the wall and right here. So that gets me about 26 inches away from the video transmitter antenna in the back which as I said is right back there and that gives me enough separation. The GPS is pretty far away from it too 
So that, that's going to work out pretty good. i got my receivers right up here and the video transmitter in the rear. Now this isn't normally how I do it, as I said, but I just didn't want to put things out on the wings. I wanted the wing to be simple. So that's why I've got my transmitter receivers dismounted right on the fuselage. Okay, next i got to hook up the camera. Here's the camera connector. So as far as the FBV camera goes, I decided to mount it onto the bottom of the plane. I'll just flip it over here. And right down here, I have a Runcam Phoenix mounted right on the bottom in this little hole, this little vent hole. And I think it'll still get plenty of air through the top vent hole. But this is a good place for the camera, kind of like the Volantix Ranger on the bottom. And I just ran the wire up underneath the battery tray. So the wire you can't even see because it goes underneath this plywood underneath here. And then it comes up right here and then just plugs into the socket that I provided up here for the camera. So that makes it very easy to install and it's out of the way of the canopy entirely. So there's no real room taken up in the battery compartment. And I can just go ahead and pop the top back on. Now right up here there's some Velcro, some black hook Velcro. I don't know if you can see that. But this is where I'm going to put on my HD camera. So I'll just Velcro my HD camera right here to capture that beautiful footage. And it's just aimed down just a little bit. You can see right here it's got a slant to it so it looks down towards the ground just a little bit. Maybe catches a tiny bit of the nose. But uh, I, could, I could change that if I wanted to. And uh, there's the other camera. So they're both just aimed down slightly and that makes them coordinated for my video. So I think that's going to work out pretty good and also when I put this camera on the front right here, the HD camera, which is a little run cam HD, that actually balances the plane perfectly because remember I had the video transmitter in the back here and that added a tiny bit of tail weight and when I put this camera on the front that cancels it out. So it does balance on the CG just fine and it's really very light. It didn't really add any weight to it because what I removed from the plane was almost the same weight as what I put on it. So they had one of these uh, really heavy ferrite beads right here on this wire to reduce noise. These are the aileron wires. So that was removed and also the receiver was removed and this actually weighs more than the GPS and the flight controller that's in there. So I'm not adding much weight. If anything, I just added the weight of the video transmitter and the cameras. That's the extra weight. And that isn't much. So it looks like it should fly pretty much the same as far as the CG goes. So when I mount the main wing, all I have to do is connect up these two servo leads right here and then just put the wing down and put the three thumb screws in. So that's it. Very simple. In fact, I could probably leave the wing on there because it's such a small plane. But everything seems to have worked out just great. All right, so that was kind of a long video, I know, because I went through all the details on how to install everything into the plane. And uh, I don't really have time right now to add flight footage on the end of the video, but I'll have that coming up soon. And I'm going to be testing the plane for stability and also just tuning it. I'll probably be using the iNav Auto Trim, the iNav Auto Tune, and just getting all the settings right. And then we'll see how she does. Hopefully it'll fly better, or at least as good as the safe technology that was in it. All right, we'll see you later. If you have any questions or comments, just leave them under the video. And if you're not subscribed already, please subscribe. I'd really appreciate it.